Good morning. How's everyone doing? Just loaded here in Smithers. About to get onto Highway 16, headed eastbound. Once we hit Prince George, we'll head south on 97. Just keep heading south, and we'll turn into Highway 1, Trans Canada, all the way to the coast. Well, to Langley anyway, so it's not quite to the coast. And it's 11.30 already. Continue on Highway 16. Good weekend. It wasn't a great weekend, but it was a good weekend. Had a short Friday, so Friday at around what two or three p.m. I was done for the day. And then uh Saturday, Sunday off. Today morning I couldn't load till 9, but I didn't really get loaded until 9.45. Then I had to tarp the thing. So 11.30. day. Yeah, it was pretty chilly up here. It was definitely freezing the whole weekend. I was impressed with the bunk heat on this truck. Like, no problems. Idled a little bit on Saturday just to make food and charge a laptop and stuff like that. And the bunk heat lasted uh, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, all of a sudden I had uh, low uh, voltage warnings on the dashboard. So I had to idle it for, I don't know, about two hours, three hours on Sunday. And then I shut the engine off and went to bed and the bunk heat lasted all night again. So much better than my international much, much, much better. Now I gotta say, the office space in the back here with the passenger seat flipped backwards, set up the laptop there, play video games, did my paperwork. It was quite comfy. And yeah, I replaced the thin little mattress that the truck comes with with my own full-size mattress, like full thickness mattress. Still only a one-person bed, but. Last place I've had a shower is Thursday. 
Thursday I had a shower in Prince George. I'm gonna try to pull through Prince George today, take a shower there. All the public, like all the truck stops, all those showers are closed. I can't take showers there. So I've got family here in Prince George. I just don't have a lot of spare time, but I'm gonna make time. Like I need to take a shower. And then, so I'll take a shower today, and then I don't know when the next shower will be. All the places are shut, so I might not have a shower until Friday. Got lots of baby wipes. I just think if we're essential workers, we keep, we keep the freight moving for these essential projects that they've got. Maybe not treat us like pets. Actually, you know, animals are being treated better than we are. Most restaurants are allowing takeout food, like uh, a and I can go on the mobile app and order fast food that way. I did that on the weekend. I don't have any homemade meals in the truck now, so I had to buy a bunch of freezer meals from the superstore. From Safeway, I think I went to, yeah. Bought some stuff on Friday, and then on Sunday I bought some stuff on as well. So Walmart and Safeway food. It's gonna be a bit of a boring week as far as food goes. So I might try some more fast food along the road because freezer food isn't great either. I got canned food, freezer food. That's it. And of course, sandwich meats and uh, peanut butter and sandwiches and stuff like that. Peanut butter and honey. freezer in the truck is so small that you can only bring enough food for one week of homemade meals. Not even. You can only bring a couple of homemade meals in the, in the freezer. Four or five meals at the max. If I don't get home for the weekend, I get kind of bland food the rest of the week. At least a restaurant food, or um, not restaurant food, but um, grocery food. Um, it's not ever a big fan of it. Oh, looks like one, one of my bungees broke. I see the end of it flapping in the wind. Eh, hopefully it stays there until I can pull over and put another one on there. I mean, the, the tarp's gonna stay there, but hopefully the end of the bungee's gonna stay there and not end up on the road. to be careful with my camera and make sure it doesn't switch into the dash cam mode and make all these one minute videos well luckily I had the weekend to edit video because that was a lot of one minute videos to paste together last week and then of course it copied over so much of my video it's like ah oh well gotta be careful I don't know how it switches modes but that's the second time it's done it Sixty. 
where are we? Telqua? Telqua? Tilqua or Telqua? I'm gonna go with Telqua. 50. load coming through. Well, wide or tall, oversize. Well, maybe a long one, wide one. <laughs> Must be just wide enough that it needs a pilot car. I saw that, it said washrooms. I wonder if those are open. Yeah, the problem we're having right now is hygiene. How am I supposed to be hygienic? With all the washrooms being closed, the only washrooms are open are the restrooms and they're just pit toilets. There's no flowing water at most of those. All I got is hand sanitizer. I'm running low on that. And it's illegal to sell hand sanitizer in grocery stores right now, so you can't buy any more. So all I got left is baby wipes. your hands yeah sure give me the opportunity to wash my hands I was washing my hands long before it was cool to do so and now you've taken the ability for me to do it which is really annoying I understand why they've shut stuff down but kind of leaves us highway drivers high and dry. Fort Tilqua. standing water. Yeah, I spent a lot of the weekend playing farm sim. I only missed two of the mods I wanted, so I downloaded almost everything I needed for the game. I made it work. My farmer just started poorer than, than our multiplayer game.
like their multiplayer game that we set up last weekend or for you guys, it's like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. So much that I made a multiplayer version even harder. Harder economic, slower plant growth. Started with less equipment. But it's fun. It's fun when it's hard. These pit toilets here, and of course they're all out of toilet paper and out of hand sanitizer. be a nice relaxing drive today. Even though it's cloudy, it should still be a nice relaxing drive. And I'm not super, super heavy. I haven't done the math how much I weigh, but I could have taken more bundles, quite a bit more bundles, but I let them know that and they're like, that's the order. It's like, okay. Won't complain. I've done my job to let you know I can take more. On Highway 16, Trans Canada Highway eastbound, just leaving uh, Vanderhoof. Vanderhoof, that's better. Also known as the Highway of Tears. the highway where many, many, many young women have disappeared on. You'll see missing signs, posters everywhere. A lot of young women have gone missing on this highway. Because honestly, nobody cares. That's the problem. Nobody cares. Young women aren't hitchhiking. They probably have a pimp hidden somewhere. Also, all these women go missing because this is out in the boonies. I predict a lot of the women have been picked up, well, at least some of the women have been picked up by truck drivers. 
brought along and then killed along the way somewhere. Or brought along and dropped off somewhere in the middle of nowhere where they can't get back, they have no way, no means of surviving. They have to go into prostitution and die from drug habits and stuff like that because they didn't have a choice. They Why does nobody care? Because most of the missing women are uh, native women and for some reason we don't care about native people. I don't get it. If along Highway 1 this many white people, settlers disappeared, if all of a sudden this many young women disappeared down there, all hell would break loose, but up here, a bunch of native women go missing, nobody cares. And that's a problem. Huge problem. Ah, it's just so sad. So sad to know that up here the communities are so vulnerable. Vulnerable. And if you're a young woman up here, your chances of being kidnapped and put into the sex trade, or there's a missing billboard right there. You see those billboards all over the, up this highway, and most of the women don't have a billboard. A lot of the people that their loved ones are missing, they don't have the means to look for them. They, they themselves are poor. We need to start caring. What can I do about it? Well, not much, but I can keep my eyes open. As a trucker, if I pull up to a truck stop and I see a young woman going truck to truck, they're probably not there voluntarily. Perhaps make a call, help them out. It is very, very rare that I see a prostitute because I don't stay at truck stops overnight. I stay out in the middle of nowhere, so I'm not a fan of truck stops, all the eye-link trucks and stuff. I like I like my privacy. If I can time it out, I'll always be parked by myself somewhere out in the boonies. Most of the time I can time it out. But we can't just look the other way. If we see something that's illegal and we know it's not right, make a phone call. If we just look the other way, we're just as guilty as, not just as guilty, but we are still guilty. We are helping the problem by not seeing something. We could be guilty of a young woman's death just because we didn't make a call. Make a call if we see something wrong. Instead of everybody pulling out their phones and recording when they see something wrong, perhaps 
make a phone call instead with that same phone. Start carrying. Doesn't take a lot of effort from our, our end to care a little bit. And who has the right to say one human's life is worth more than a different human's life? I certainly won't be the judge of whose lives are more important. But I'll say, young women missing up here, their lives seem pretty important. Highway of Tears. Google it. Maybe we can make our government start taking care or caring about every human being. Now we got another missing billboard here. And those are scattered all along the highway. Some of them are all worn out. People have been gone, young women have been going missing for many, many, many years here. Many, many years. And this is in the middle of nowhere. Good luck finding a body out here. And also if a trucker picks someone up, this is a major trucking route. Kitimat down to Quebec, back and forth. You can pick someone up here and drop them downtown Winnipeg and that person just disappears into. Person might be alive down there for a while and they have no way of contacting home. Not cool. I just figured I was driving this highway. It's worth saying something about it. I can't do much on my end. Other than stating the fact that Maybe bring some awareness to it, I don't know. We gotta talk about it out loud. We can't just ignore the problem. Talking about it would maybe be the first step. listened on the radio and re read some of the reports up here of the missing women. The police didn't do much. Some of, some of the cases, the police have not done much. Nothing against the police. They're so understaffed over here. The government has given them so little resources that they put so little bit of time into a missing woman. It's like, oh yeah, another one of those. Okay. Got no hard leads right away. Sorry. Government needs to uh, put more resources up here. 
so they can take each missing person and thoroughly investigate them. my buddy a little bit a while ago. He was headed to Kitimat. He had a load coming in from Quebec. Got 70 kilometers to go till Prince George. Quickly stop at my sister's place and take a shower. And then move along. I've got an appointment to unload this at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. If I didn't stop for a shower, I think I could make the 10 a.m. appointment. Stopping for the shower? Yeah, it might be close. Might be 11, but I haven't had a shower since Thursday. There is a shower still open in Prince George. Uh, the Husky still has a public shower that's open to us. But if I'm stopping in Prince George for a shower, I might as well be in a clean shower that I, I know is a safer environment. And I don't have to wait in line for showers, so. And then I don't know where my next opportunity for a shower will be. Like I was saying, it might be Friday. Hopefully I find an opportunity between there, but depends on what my runs are.
we've just left Prince George. We're southbound on Highway 97. I noticed when I stopped at my sister's place to go run, take a shower, and chat for a couple of minutes. Um, like walking back to the truck, uh, running back to the truck because I wanted to keep everything within that one hour. It was just this light misting and then jumped in the truck. It's like, oh, it's a little more drizzle. And by the time I'm on the road here, it's, it's coming down pretty good. It's raining. Plus seven degrees, which means it could be snowing on some passes right now. tired of uh, things on my Facebook stream or Facebook feed and uh, YouTube and uh, just news all together. One side of the news is extremely right-wing and the other side of the news is extremely left-wing and it's like can't we just be moderate? Especially with COVID-19 can we just meet in the middle and just treat each other nice, not be whining about everything. So COVID-19 has officially made me unfriend people. I honestly don't want to hear the far right extremist Everything's a conspiracy. The government is a bunch of crooks. And I don't want to hear all the way left hand side of panic to this crazy degree where I'm reporting my neighbor because they went for a short drive. It's not illegal to drive, not here yet anyway. My neighbor's driving every day and he's not wearing a uniform, so it's unnecessary travel. What do you know what your neighbor's driving to? Mind your own business. And then of course, the government or, or everything wrong with the world is a bunch of rich billionaires and it's like one side's yelling at the government the other side's yelling at the billionaires and they don't realize that they're both the same people the government is run by a bunch of billionaires so if you guys hear me whining about stuff like I am right now tell me to shut up and go back to the positive stuff because I don't want to be extreme left. I don't want to be extreme right. I want to be in the middle, accepting of everybody. If you're so far left that uh, you can't accept people on the right anymore, there's an issue. And if you are so far right that you can't accept people on the left anymore, there's an issue there. So The only people that I'm unfriending and unapproving are the people that are not accepting of other people that are my way or the highway. Let's accept each other. Let's be positive. Let's let's be charitable charitable. And I'll try not to whine. If if you guys ever hear me whining, let me know. Call me out on it. Let's let's be positive. Yeah I know I'm whining about whining, right? <laughs> But I am enjoying this rain. It's a beautiful drive. How far will I make it? I have five and a half hours of drive time left. And it's going to take about nine and a half hours to get there. So let's look on the map. 
about halfway. Hmm. You think I can make it to Cache Creek? That's maybe. Maybe I can make it to Cache Creek. That's my rough estimate right now. We'll travel. See if we can travel to the end of Highway 97 today, and then take Highway 1 tomorrow. Dispatch told me that they've got me an appointment for 10 a.m. tomorrow to unload. And I told them it's maybe going to be closer to 11, but if they're not too busy, wait. They're, she said that they can call them tomorrow morning. It's like, okay, that's perfect. Tomorrow morning I'll have a much better idea of how far I can make it. It's not a super heavy load, so I might make better time than I think. But right now, I would say I'd get there at 11. My GPS says I will get there at 11.30, but I know I can beat that time. At least I think I can. Medium scale. So far, every single scale the last two weeks has been pretty much closed. I have not run into open scales. Scale is closed. There's a silver lining. Saves me a couple of minutes. Probably saves me about five minutes. Because it takes a while to get back up to speed. Although, the heck was that? My CB radio had a weird sound going on. Really weird. Um, <laughs> um, this one's going downhill to leave, so you don't lose as much time on this one here. And then if you get pulled over, you know, then you're going to lose lots of time. It's rare I get pulled over, but every now and then they pull over. Ooh, that car looked like they had a bad day. Place the wipers nice and squeaky clean every time they go over. So much better. All right, let's grab a couple of gears. Almost like I knew there was a fairly steep hill coming. some ice on the Fraser River up here. Yeah, if it's 
it's going to be an overcast day and might as well rain. I, I enjoy the rain, just the sound of all the raindrops hitting the windshield. I quite enjoy it. I wouldn't mind at all if it was a harder rain. beautiful country up here. Even if there's not big mountains or anything, it's still a beautiful country. We got a pretty sweet job. And I got to see my nieces and nephew again. My niece was into a really in-depth project. She was trying to decide her new lock screen wallpaper on her phone. Very serious endeavor for a teenage girl. And my nephew was very deep into uh, Terraria. Video gaming. I was watching the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I was uh, watching through the video as I was editing it on the weekend. I think the camera is a lot less shaky, but I never realized how much the hood flexes back and forth is shimmying the whole time on this truck. I wonder if it's a thinner tin or something and the whole hood just shimmies with the wind. Be a little bit distracting in some videos. Jess says she did get the camera mount, the suction cup, so that uh, is at home now. Four point seven. I'm four point, just under four point one. Almost a legal, legal max height. Yeah, rain's starting to slow down. I was enjoying it. Roads are nice and dry, but I was enjoying it. if it turns into snow I might not be as might not enjoy it quite as much We're still like 75 kilometers from Quenell
climbing these hills better. So I should be able to make up some time. Travel a little faster than normal. I save two or three minutes on every climb. It'll make a difference by the end of the day. It's what, 5.30 now? No wonder I'm starting to get hungry. So next time I gotta stop for a load secure, I'm gonna have to find some food. Sometimes I get stuck behind a slow truck too. It's been about 60 kilometers now stuck behind this guy. Every time a passing lane comes up, it's an uphill passing lane and I'm just a little bit slower than he is climbing the hill. And anytime we get onto the flat open area, he's doing 10 to 20 under the speed limit. And there's not enough passing lanes or passing areas on the straightaway. 10 and, and 10, 20 kilometers under the speed limit, I can barely pass a car, let alone a big rig. So there's no chance of me passing this guy until we have extended period of four lane highway. obnoxious but what do you do what do you do I'm not risking passing him dude can't maintain his lane either like I mean I I bounce a little left and right too but this guy seems to sometimes really leave this lane and then swerve back in. So, yeah, might be a little distracted. We're doing 77 and 100 right now. And slowing down. Why are we slowing down this much? I know there's a hill coming, but... over the yellow line again. He's a wide load. He goes over the yellow line quite a bit for a wide load. Should be driving on the fog line. It's way over the yellow line now. Dude's taking half, halfway over the yellow line. Dude. When you're a wide load, you're supposed to be on the white line, not on the yellow line. Man, what is oncoming traffic around that corner? just staying across the other. This is weird. We're doing 50 and just reduced speed to 70, so. Now, 
down to 40. You turning off? I hope you're turning off because you're going in there. Scales closed. Did he turn off there? Yeah, he turned off there. That was just a little bizarre. Don't experience that every day. Yeah, followed him for 60, a little over 60 kilometers, but 65 kilometers. And he kept going over the lane, but not as bad as he's going down that, down that, yeah, that was, that was bizarre. Well, at least I won't have to follow him anymore. Uh, we are in Quenelle. training again as you guys can see I don't mind it's kind of fun I know I haven't found any food yet and thanks for the info by the way Petropass here does have DEF now which is nice half a tank on DEF and fuel so I don't need to stop but it's nice to know they have DEF here now I wouldn't have bothered making that a DEF stop because I didn't know Like it's a green light for me. How are they crossing? It's like, oh, it's just a stop sign for them. Never mind, it's okay. That's the back side of a Safeway there. Don't know where we would park as Super Bees. In 400 meters, turn right. 
Turn left on Caribou Highway. Turn left at the traffic light. No, thank you. Yeah, I'll do that one. That one makes more sense. At least if I've got another super bee in front of me, at least he won't be a wide load. <laughs> I predict he's going to be slow too. Okay, I know he's going to be slow because they're speed restricted at 95 kilometers per hour. So when we get out to you open, he'll be slower than me. Um, I don't know if he's loaded or empty right now. If he's loaded, it's not very loaded. Well, actually, yes, I do know. When he pulled in there, I looked, this little side windows had chips in it, so he is loaded. I just don't know how heavy he is. Will he be faster than me going up the hill or not? If he's faster than me going, than, faster than me going up the hill, it'll be fun passing him too, but... We'll make it work. This guy's not a wide load, and... And he'll be doing 95, so he'll be going close to the speed limit. Well, at least I hope he will be. He or she. They. They will be going. quickly climbing this hill who is heavier. Oh, he's turning off. I think, yeah, he's turning off, so. Never mind, we will not know anything. I know nothing. kilometers per hour.
25 kilometers per hour. Sutco driver. He uh, he waited to go to uh, Safeway too late, and he couldn't buy any fruit last night. And he goes, they closed early. They closed like at seven. It's like, yeah, a lot of places are closing early now. He goes, I got to find groceries along the way. So he's trying to think. He goes, I can't think of anywhere except for Grand Forks where I can stop for groceries. I'm like, you can stop here in Quinell. Up at the top of the hill here, on the uh, left, left hand side. Yeah, left hand side. There's uh, some shopping centers up here that you can easily pull a big rig into. service road behind there as well. You can always park on the service road there too. I see big rigs parked on the service road there all the time. Not the one up close where you see him park. Further back there's another service road. there and an extra foods so get get some good groceries here and it's still trucker friendly I don't see him park anywhere but I stopped in Prince George for an hour so likely even if he did stop he would have gone yeah got back on the road again. Probably stop for half an hour if he stopped. Well, that 
Thomas Quinnell. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for listening to me ramble on about some boring stuff, some whining stuff, some serious stuff, some sad stuff. And thanks for all the comments. Thanks for supporting me. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, hit that thumbs up, drop in a comment. I looked uh, yesterday, I was last week I was saying 30% um, of you guys that uh, watch my videos are subscribers. It's actually at 34% now, so a lot of you have gone and subscribed, so thank you. 34% of you are actually subscribed, that number keeps getting bigger, that's huge, so thank you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Booting along uh, the Fraser Fraser River. Well, part of it is not along the Fraser River, as you guys point out. When I make that mistake, because Fraser River splits at Layton, Lytton. I never know how to pronounce town names. But anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow.